what happens when you eat the food? Like, I have uh, cookies here. So when you put it in the mouth, in the moment you bite, I can actually sense how crispy or how brittle or how hard or how soft is the food. So basically when I bite the food, I apply an external force through my teeth then I start to break down the structure of the food and the food start to disintegrate. So the response given as, the, as a result of the biting or the external force or the stress that we apply. We can measure the mechanical and the textural properties of the food. So this is actually the application of force and the strain or the deformation and you can measure um, the uh, several parameters that give you a measure of the hardness, the softness, the crispness, the brittleness, cohesiveness, gumminess of the food or the springiness. So um, this is what we call texture uh, profile analysis, which can be done subjectively by using an expert panelist, I mean the human, or we can also use an instrument, a texture profile um, analysis by using uh, an instrument such as texture profile and a texture uh, analyzer. Okay, so you see in, the, in this picture here, um, we have the chocolate bar, and we put it in the mouth. So just uh, instead of, you know, uh, using the human as the panelist, uh, which is subjective, we can actually put the same chocolate bar on the instrument. It can apply um, the uh, the force, and you can connect this to the computer. It can measure all the uh, textural parameters. Okay. So in this um, presentation, I will actually uh, explain. Uh, the two questions from the test, um, this one and uh, this one. So basically, in the test, uh, I gave you this uh, graph of force against distance and asked you to interpret the results on, in terms of and, uh, brittleness and hardness and rank it you know, from the, the most brittle to the least brittle, from the hardest to the least uh, hard, hardest. You know? Then another one is actually you are given the texture profile uh, analysis for two sample, pretzel stick and cream cheese. But in your test, actually, uh, I think I give you the uh, sausage. Then um, uh, you are supposed to interpret the texture profile uh, parameters based on the uh, graph here. So before that, uh, I will explain to you once again um, texture profile analysis. Actually, you can find uh, more uh, detailed explanation from my video lectures, which uh, I've given you the link in, in Schoology. Um, so this is actually the picture um, from, I borrow from Texture uh, Technologies. And this is a website which is very good. Uh, so basically um, what, what we have here is a picture of how we actually set up the texture analyzer to carry out texture profile uh, analysis or TPA. So usually we cut the sample into a specific shape of known height and known uh, dimension, the diameter of a specific diameter. Then this is geometry. So we set up the texture analyzer. So we can set up the speed of this uh, uh, geometry or the head or the probe. So we set up the compression. So usually uh, TPA is done in uh, compression mode. So we uh, compress down the sample up to about 75% uh, compression. Then, um, so uh, in TPA, we have two compressions. So this is actually the first compression down to around uh, 75 percent uh, compression then it will go up so this is the decompression um, phase it will go up and if does uh, you can see after the first compression depending on the type of sample depending on the structure of the sample um, whether it will spring up a bit 
or it will remain you know like this so that how we measure the springiness of, of the sample so here after the first compression you can see for this sample I think this uh, hard cheese um, some uh, the, most of the structure has been destroyed after we apply the 75% compression so the probe uh, goes up then we have a second compression always uh, there is a second compression when we do TPA uh, same at 75% compression and um, it will compress the sample again then it will go up again so that's a, uh, there are two cycle of compression decompression, compression and decompression that's how we do the texture uh, profile analysis and from there we can measure actually several uh, parameters okay um, I want to show you um, a website which I would uh, strongly recommend to you uh, texture technologies I think this is the best website if you want to learn more about texture profile analysis you can see here there are 11 section here so you can click actually the link to each of this to go uh, into details uh, for each of the section what is texture profile analysis the description the history especially and how do we set the instrument to measure uh, the TPA by using texture analyzer and uh, the parameters that we measure so let's uh, I, will, I will jump to um, this one to show you an uh, example of um, different sample here and how we carry out the texture uh, the TPA so here uh, we have a wheat bread by applying only 25% compression here we have 50% compression and 75% compression here we have tofu different compression <coughs> we have cheddar cheese from 25 to 75 percent we have jelly bean we have hot dog which is uh, the test questions actually uh, I give you a hot dog sample or sausage well it's uh, about the same jelly and so on so look at each of the sample and see the response or the text the TPA profile and you can see here for example let's say we look at wheat bread at 75 75 percent compression let's look at the video So you can see this is the first compression. In this case, this is bread, and you can see it's actually spring back a little bit. Then the second compression, and it's still spring back a little bit. So for this type of sample, because the structure is very spongy, so you can expect actually the springiness is quite high, and you don't expect actually a, a major breakdown of the internal structure. So I would expect the cohesiveness is, is relatively high. So if I if we, if we look at the um, the analysis the texture the TPA profile, we can see here the first and the second peak is about you know uh, the second peak is still quite 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 uh, quite uh, significant and it is only slightly lower than the first peak. So we can we, we saw in the video just now after the first compression the bread actually spring up the the the, 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 the main structure is still there uh, there's not much of the destruction of the of the internal structure that's why you can see the second compression you can still see the peak is quite high here and there is no negative peak which means that the, the, the adhesiveness uh, is actually almost uh, negligible and there is no actually fracturability because if you have if the sample fracture after a certain uh, degree of compression you can see a small peak appear here okay so this is actually a good example of um, the TPA for bread what about let's see um, we look at a cheese here cheddar cheese cheddar cheese is actually a hard cheese so let's see how um, it looks like so we have the first compression here 75 percent compression you can see how the structure is disrupted then it is actually doesn't spring back then we still have some structure here then now we wait for the second compression okay the second compression done all right then finish 
Then when we look at the profile, so we can see here the first compression actually from here to here. Then this is the decompression part. The second part is the decompression part. Okay. So we can see before before we reach the maximum of uh, hard, the, the maximum peak here, at certain uh, at some point uh, in the first compression, actually there is an a fract the, the the internal structure, um, the text analyzer actually can detect the first fracture um, in the sample in the in the in the internal structure of the sample. So this is actually detected as the as this uh, you know small peak here. Then the compression, the first compression, continue until uh, we reach a seventy-five percent compression here. So this is actually maximum maximum peak, and we actually measure the hardness here. Then the decompression part, and we can see there's a negative peak there. Okay, there's a negative peak there, which shows that uh, the area here will give you the measure of adhesiveness of the sample. Then it goes up. Then the compression, the second compression. Uh, the probe come down and we can see we, we saw from the video just now there is still uh, some structure left so when the second compression see the the peak is much uh, low uh, smaller than the, the first peak which means that the, the remaining structure uh, after the first compression is is not that much compared to the break just now so we can see the second peak is uh, actually much smaller uh, compared to the first peak. So we can get actually the measure of the first uh, compression part and the second compression part from the second peak. We can get a measure of adhesiveness and we would expect the adhesive, sorry, the cohesiveness, which is a measure of the internal strength of, of, the, of the structure. Uh, so we would expect the, inter the cohesiveness for a uh, hard cheese is relatively high also. Uh, but maybe lower than the bread just now. What about um, the uh, let's say the hot dog? Okay, the hot dog here. If you look at the um, how the hot dog sample when it is subjected to TPA. Okay, so the first compression is coming now to. 75%, you can see whoops, the, the structure, the internal structure break and goes up. Now the second compression is coming down. All right, break more of the internal structure. Okay, so let's see the how the TPA profile looks like. The highest peak is actually this one, which actually measure of the hardness. Then uh, when the probe goes up, we can see you know the detection analyzer can actually detect uh, the, frag, the the breakdown of the structure in in the sample. Okay, but uh, here you, we don't see a, a negative peak here, uh, which means the, there's not much of the adhesiveness um, in the sample just now, although. We probably we 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 expect there is some adhesiveness, but it is not shown here. And we can see we, we we saw from the video just now the breakdown and this integration of the internal structure of of the uh, sample just now was quite uh, major. So the when when the second compression uh, uh, comes in, we actually don't see much uh, structure remain. Remaining, so we can see a smaller, very much a smaller peak uh, on the second uh, compression. So um, I hope you can go through uh, each one of these. So actually, we get the results. Uh, yeah, I think uh, here we have a detailed results of the uh, in terms of the hardness, stringiness, cohesiveness, and other uh, primary and secondary TPA parameters. Then um, actually you can uh, get the explanation what it means, uh, what does TPA measure, and the meaning of each of these parameter. So it's worth to spend some time to on this website to learn more detail about uh, TPA from uh, from this website. Okay, so.
let's go back to um, the question. So you are given the graph here, which is uh, the uh, plot of force against distance. Okay, this is not actually the actual um, sample. I mean, the actual graph from the sample is just actually we make it simple. So we just draw uh, the profile for A, B, C, and D. So the graph below indicate differences in product behavior with regard to fracturability or brittleness and hardness. So first, so you have to rank, uh, you have to rank the brittleness and the hardness first to fourth. First means more brittle or the hardest. Fourth means least brittle or lowest hardness. So the, the answer is actually, um, to answer this, you look at, okay, hardness is actually the highest peak. So you can see for A, this is the highest peak here, B and C and D, and they are all the same height. So in this case, we can say that for hardness, A is equal to B equal to C equal to D. They have the same hardness because the height of the maximum peak is the same. What about the brittleness? Okay, to look at the brittleness, we um, when, when we apply the force, actually we can measure the distance. So for a sample like A here, and compared to sample like B here, and C here, okay, and D, the longer the distance, the less brittle is the sample. The shorter the distance is the more brittle the sample. That makes sense, right? Because when you compress a sample, the brittle sample would not able to take the force very much and will start to break. But for a harder sample or, or more uh, less brittle or less brittle sample, it will take more or higher force. So the probe will you know, be able to travel uh, longer or further before the sample start to break. Okay, so um, so when we are looking at sample A is the least brittle, then sample B and C and D. Okay, so if you understand the principle, then this one you should be able to work out. Let's see the hardness. So you can see sample E has the highest peak and sample H is the lowest. So you can say that the, the E is the least, uh, sorry, one is the, one is highest hardness. So in this case, E, followed by F, followed by G, and then H. What about the brittleness? We look at the, the, at the, at the distance. So it seems that for, for E, F, G, and H, they travel the same distance. Means That means the brittleness is the same, so we can write E equal to F equal to G equal to H. Okay, they are of equal distance, so meaning that they have the same uh, degree of brittleness. The third one here, let's look at the hardness first. Well, obviously, L has the highest peak. I is the lowest peak, so meaning that L here and I here, then we have K and J. What about the brittleness? Well, we have I here, we have J, K, and L. So here, the, um, the most brittle would be I because it's travel the shortest distance and the, the least brittle is L. So that's how you know um, we interpret this uh, graph. Okay, now um, how do we interpret the texture profile analysis for plastic and cream cheese? 
I think um, maybe you get some idea already. Um, so I hope you can um, uh, you know study uh, the, the website just now. But pretzel stick. What is pretzel stick? Pretzel stick is actually if you Google and look at the picture, if you don't know what is pretzel stick, it's actually very hard. It's type of snack food. It's very hard uh, on the outside. So when you bite, actually it's, it's quite hard. You have to bite it very hard. But the, the moment the, the pretzel stick break, the internal structure actually will break very easily. So, you know, it, it kind of break, then it will kind of it will, it will break uh, easily. The whole, the whole structure actually will collapse. So this is what we observe uh, here. So initially, when we apply the force, because the, 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 the outer part, the outer part is very hard, so you can see the resistance to the force. That's why it, will, it, will, it actually shoot up. It shoot up, and you can see the hardness is, is high. But then the moment the sample break, the internal structure will collapse, like that, you know? Then the first compression finish. And the, so for pretzel stick, after the first compression, most of the structure already destroyed. Very little left. So the second compression, you can see a very little, very small force is needed to compress the remaining structure of the sample. Okay. Then you can actually calculate the, uh, the area here, A1, and A2 here is very small. Okay. So you, the cohesiveness in this case uh, is actually uh, very low if you take the ratio of the, this area, this area and that area. Okay. Whereas in case of cream cheese here, um, we can see the, 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 the slope here is not as steep, you know, like, like the, in the pretzel cheese. So meaning that uh, if you observe uh, in the video just now, the, the, when you apply the force, the, sam the sample is actually slowly uh, compressed. So you can see the force is actually slowly increased. And this is the hardness. Then you can see the, the adhesiveness here. Then you can take the area ratio of this area and this area. You can measure the cohesiveness. Okay. So once again, I would uh, advise you to study further. Uh, about TPA on this website and look at the different examples that they have and the interpretation of each of those uh, TPA graphs. Thank you.